so let's see. So I covered a lot of the things that I wanted to cover here. Uh, I know what I want to go into is um, brain function. So I know in, in the oxygen therapy world, TBIs and just cognitive issues and things like this, which is why I got into doing the hyperbarics is, um, you know, one of the, I think, most abundant benefits. What have you seen with this type of training, the oxygen training versus therapy when it comes to brain injuries and, you know, the cascade of possible um, you know, mental deficiencies, mental illness, emotional problems, just because our brains are are lacking blood flow to key parts to keep them all working. Right. So if I speak in terms of functional optimization, you know, the I'll call it the IQ differential. Yeah. Um, the brain's an organ just like anything else. And it if it has the resources to make energy, it will work more efficient. And so whenever you have an injury, like, you know, a concussion or something like that, basically, if it's a mild concussion, the brains get smushed up against the side and it basically gets a bruise. And if the blood flow is limited, then that bruise will interfere with the corresponding tissue as long as it lasts. And it turns, you know, because most people don't often create that, that, like, for example, if you look at TBI, you know, they'll end up with parts of the brain shut off over time. Well, eventually the brain will adapt and it'll, they call it neuroplasticity and it'll learn how to do the same job using different circuits, but that takes years. So in this case, you just basically blast, you know, it through. And what we've seen, like in terms of, and we've done, I'll call it pop-ups where we take a group of people and say, okay, we'll set up a training circuit and we'll test them in the beginning, like on Monday. And they'll do the circuit for five days and we'll test them again on Friday. And if you use the standard of how they would describe their quality of life on Friday versus Monday, um, our success rate is 100%. Okay, of the people that have had, I'll call it a sequence of recent mild concussions, recent being five years or less, um, about half of them will say, I feel completely normal by Friday. Wow, that's crazy. Um, and that's it's just, crazy fast. Cause in contrast, like when I, you know, I didn't even have a TBI that I'm aware of, but when I went and saw Dr. Amen and he kind of prescribed a hundred hyperbaric sessions in rapid succession, like mm -hmm. within a short period of time. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a long time and that's a lot of hours and hours. Oh, yeah, I mean, we're talking, each one is two hours a piece yeah. and a hundred. Yeah. So you're looking at two hours, 200 hours of dwell time. <laughs> I like that the dwell time because that's that's what you're doing. I mean, I keep myself occupied, but your average person, I think, would go crazy doing that many hyperbaric sessions, you know, to get the desired result. Right. Well, and, you know, when you start to think about the brain, it's your emotion, your perception of the world, your spiritual, your relationships with your family. And so if, you know, I don't want to necessarily talk so much about the quote unquote recovery, but if you try to measure the people that we work with in terms of their perception of the world and how they feel, their ability to have good relationships. You know, once the brain's well oxygenated, especially if there's a part that wasn't well oxygenated that is now and that starts to work, then their ability to reckon and understand kind of comes back on. And then they drop out of this need to respond to things with anxiety. So like a very typical thing, like, I'm calm. All right. Another one that's really big is a lot of the people that have had successive concussions, they'll be dependent on two, three, you know, substances, you know, even if they're not prescription, they'll use them to self-medicate because they have to, in order to cope with their reality, because they have to numb it down or they can't get by. And so once they, you know, start oxygenating the brain, things start working right then their need or, you know, their need to self-medicate tends to go away. And so it's just like everything about them, you know, starts to bubble and glow. Um, their ability to have healthy relationships improves because their behavior is predictable, calm, stable, or more stable. Um, and it's just beautiful. But at the end of the day, the brain's, the ability of the cells in the brain to produce energy are what enable normal, happy behavior. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, if you think about when you're uh, sleep deprived, right? And your executive function, cognitive function is taxed. You're irritable. 
you know, the person cuts you off or you perceive them to be cutting you off. I mean, just basic examples like that. I know for myself, I'm much more testy when my brain is not firing on all cylinders, let alone you've actually had a legitimate TBI or uh, even a PTSD experience of some kind, right? I mean, it's like you're kind of always in that fight or flight, amygdala firing response where anything could set you off. And, you know, that is going to ultimately affect uh, all of your relationships, like whether they're, um, you know, more remote, distant relationships or your immediate family and loved ones, et cetera. I mean, I know when my brain was in bad shape earlier in life before I really started uh, healing and working on myself, I mean, I was a, a, a much less kind person, <laughs> generally speaking, much more reactive, short tempered, short patience, couldn't focus, crazy brain fog. And when you're in that state, I mean, it's, it's frustrating. Even if you're a kind hearted person, you can't often meet your own standards because your brain just doesn't give you the capacity to operate on that level. Well, there are two, two main things. Number one, you look in the mirror and you watch yourself from the outside in. It's like, what have I become? And then you question, and that's depressing. And then the other thing from a quality of life point of view is, you know, losing that rational you because something's organically wrong. It's not your fault, but it feels like it's your fault. But when you go out and you try to present yourself or have value in, I'll call it a work relationship, your ability to monetize or make money is inhibited by the fact that you've lost the ability to control your emotions, especially under the challenging situations. So every aspect of your being and your productivity and your relationship tends to take, you know, take a hit and, you know, living in that state where your brain's not working right, it, 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 it eats you away because you, 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 you have to work and it exhausts you because you have to work so hard to try to be normal. Right, right. Yeah, it's like you have to actually exert energy to be a good person, even if you really are one in your heart, you know, which I believe. Well, you're trying, most people are. Yeah. But, and the, the whole notion in terms of the, you know, the life challenge that, you know, the, uh, I'll call it just the concussion, you know, so we have lots of source, you know, people hit, you know, playing concussive sports, but not knowing what they need to do to restore their brain function. And so like what we see is, you know, especially people that play contact sports and military and other, they get on this and like, wow, man, I feel normal again. And if they have the tool they can continue to do whatever, but instead of having a, I'll call it a durable damage, you know, they'll just kind of bounce back and stay normal through their career. So one of our things is to like, you know, get these into the hands of people that are, you know, play rough. And because of that, they'll, number one, enjoy the anti-aging process, meaning they'll get old slower and they will recover better and they just won't accumulate the damage like you know the fighters and mma and the guys that you know play the play rough they end up having a i'll call it a pretty degenerative lifestyle yeah, because yeah. of the accumulation of the injuries that happen because they don't have the technology just to you know kind of recover on the fly 